St. Joseph County Sheriff's Office. How can I help you? Well, I was wondering, can I get somebody to do a wellness check? Okay, and what's the person's name? Uh, his name is Father Renee Robert. I think my brother might have done something to hurt him and stole his car and everything. I got a phone call from my sergeant at the time, and he told us we had a missing priest. We made contact with the person who cleaned his apartment, and patrol deputies went inside the apartment with her, and he was not there. There was no obvious signs of a struggle. There was no blood. So it looked like he could have just up and left. My brother is Stephen Murray. Okay. My brother got out. He got released from jail. And Father Renee called me when he got out. Um, my brother had already contacted him for money and rides and stuff like that. Okay. She told the detectives that Father Rene had become involved with individuals that were travel per se, that had been in jail. He always tried to actually help him recover, get on the right path. And Father Rene was trying to help Stephen with drug addiction and drug use. Behind the Signal 8 vehicle, we got a Corolla, blue in color. We're on 207, Hoods, Force 95, and it uh, looks like he doesn't want to stop. We're talking he's doing 115, 120 miles an hour on I-95. It's a high stress situation. All right, we're in the construction zone. We're gonna have to slow it down, guys. 54, we lost him in the construction. We all backed off. It was a little bit frustrating and upsetting. Whoever was driving the car was a critical piece of the puzzle for us to be able to get to where Father Rene was. Bobby was there by himself. We told him, listen, we need to figure out where Steven is. We need to talk to him. Bobby said, I can't help you and find him. Let me ask you this. Tell me, what do you know as far as your son's activities for the past three or four days? He, he came to the house last night. He walked up to the house. He was drinking. He left the house about four hours ago. When he left, he he took my phone with him. Any idea where he went to? Uh, no. OK. He didn't say. He, just, right. said, he just told me he'd be back in a little while. SWAT starts working down this fire break in the woods searching for Stephen, and they come upon Father Renee's vehicle. As they're approaching, they find Stephen Murray behind the wheel. Stephen apparently sees some motion or light in his rearview mirror, starts the car up, and takes off. However, he ended up crashing and running away from the vehicle. So he has fled into basically the jungle. After several hours of kind of keeping constant pressure and perimeter on this area, working it with teams, dogs, and helicopters, we kind of catch a break. And finally, Stephen comes down. I think it was very tiring on Stephen, and I think he just ran out of wind. But how fast were you driving to lose all of the police cars? I wasn't driving. I'm, I'm not going to argue with you about it. We know you were, because yeah, okay, you, you told you told your dad, you told your sister. You know, we didn't just magic our ways up here. So you have his car. We haven't heard or seen him since. How does that look? I'm a law-abiding citizen. You know, I like smoking on a cigarette, man. Y'all asking a lot of questions. If there was something I could do to help you, you know what I'm saying, do that, I would not.
you can see by his attitude, he was going to shut down and not talk to us anymore. But you cannot give up. We're going through hell out here that we don't even deserve. People talking to us. Talking about that we used to help you cover up stuff and all, and we probably know where Father Renee is. I'm sorry, Gene. I mean, hell, what do you want me to do? I mean, tell me. I just want you to be honest with them, regardless of the situation. This ain't going to be over with until they find Father Renee. I love you with all my heart. My cell phone rings and I learned Stephen Murray has asked to speak to detectives. We didn't know about what, but he wanted to talk to us. Okay. All right. It's your show, brother. We're just here to watch. Tell yeah, us. Right. <clears throat> well, the first part of the story I told y'all where Father Nate picked me up and I was going to pay him the money, which was true. And I picked him up after I got back from the dope crowd down off 90. And we went up to South Carolina, you know, I said, I want to see my kids. Did he say he didn't want to go? He said, no point that he didn't want to go. He just said, okay. I mean, I wasn't aggressive with it or anything, you know. I, mean, I wanted to go see my kids. Well, Where's he at in the car? He's in the trunk by that point. He's in the trunk? Okay. Is he tied up or anything like that? No, sir. How'd you get him to get in the trunk? Asked him to. Did you say or else? No, I didn't say or else. I said, I need you to get in the trunk, Father Renee. And he said, okay. He climbed right in there, you know. I helped him in there and told him, I said, just, just do what I tell you to and everything's going to be okay, you know. And, you know, I'm talking to him, you know, and he's still telling me, you know, that I'm in great trouble and that I'm never going to get away with this. And I'm thinking, you know, like, oh, man, you know, maybe I am in a great deal of trouble. Well, he's steady talking to the trunk, you know, he's hollering like I use a bathroom. And I said, OK, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to let you out in just a second, you know. And so I stopped and let him out to use the bathroom. I had a nine millimeter in the arm, and I saw him. OK. So like me and you are looking at each other right now, you shot him like that? It was more of from the side. And then he fell and I shot him in the head. Okay. And left. Steven finally confessed. Father Rene was no longer alive. He's dead somewhere, but he still needed to come clean and tell us where the body was. And almost immediately when we pulled up, we saw a flock of buzzards kind of take off, which kind of drew our attention over. And you could see Father Renee's body laying at the edge of the wood line. Without the interviews, I don't think that this case would have came to the conclusion that it did. But I don't think there's any amount of resolution for this case that would ever satisfy anybody. Father Rene had actually talked about possibly dying at someone's hands in the future. And that if that had ever happened, his wishes would be that that person not be subjected to the death penalty. So it was agreed upon that Stephen would plead guilty to life in prison for malice murder, and he would spend the rest of his life behind bars. 